Hello, you are welcome to Mars Clinic series. In this video, we are looking at differentiation from the first principles. And that is what we have as dy ds is equal to limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x, or divided by h. We want to derive this particular formula. Now, let's start with our curve. And we all know that differentiation is mostly with curves. So we have a curve here, we want to find the gradient. And differentiation is all about finding the gradient of a curve. Now let's have a second. That is a line that passes through a curve. It's called second. Second. And then let's also locate an intersection of the second and then the first, I mean the curve. Let's call it P. Now this point P could have some value here, which is X. And then its corresponding y value can be a function of x, which is f of x, right? Then we can also locate another point at point A, and point A2 could have some value of x here. Now, normally we can say if this is x1, we can call this place x2. Now, the difference between x1 and x2 is changing x. So, changing s, we want to call this changing s as h, okay? Normally we use it to represent changing x in the first principle. So change in x simply means say x2 minus x1. That's a change in x. Now, if this is um, 8 here, and here we have 4, and the change in x, which is the difference between 8 and 4, is giving us 4. Let us assume that I don't know that here is 8, but I know that the difference is 4. Then for me to know what 8 or the point here is, or the value here is, I would just say 4 plus 4 here to give me that. So if this is true, and I'm calling here to be x, then I should call this place x plus h. It makes sense, right? All right. So if that is okay, then we can say then the, um, if here is point x plus h, then we could have a corresponding function of that as x, f of x plus h. Right. So that is that. Now, we want to find the gradient of this straight line that is the second the gradient of it and we know that the gradient of a straight line is consistent it's always consistent no matter which point you pick you always get the same but the gradient of a curve is not like that if i pick a point here the gradient of this point or the uh, the curve at this point will not be the same as over here it will be different throughout but for that of the straight line is always consistent so the gradient of a straight line is given easily as m equals y2 minus y1, which we all know that, x2 minus x1. Or we can say change in y over change in x. And so our gradient of PA is change in y over change in x. Now, our change in y is going to be this. That is y2 is here, and then y1 is here. And so y2 being f of x plus h over that will be this. And that of the change in x will be this also minus that. And we know that if we have x plus h minus x, this and this will be zero, leaving now with um, m is equals to everything we see here. Right. So that is the um, gradient of the second, which is a straight line. And that one is obvious. No wahala with it. Now let's see how this can be used to find the gradient of the curve at a point. Good. Now, if we start moving the point a closer and closer to the point p what will happen to the second you will see that the second will be also becoming a tangent to the curve at a point p or if you move p closer and closer to a you will still see the second also getting closer to becoming a tangent now let's see that from GeoGebra. i love GeoGebra. So if A is moving closer to P, you see that the second also is getting closer to become a tangent. The red line is a tangent and the blue line is a second. And as H is approaching zero or A is approaching P, you see the second is becoming a tangent. For that matter, the gradient of the second will be a gradient of the tangent at the point P. In that case, we can say that then the gradient of the curve 
will be the same as the gradient of the tangent at the point P, right? And so observe that as A is getting closer to P, H, that is a change in X, also is becoming closer and closer to become zero. But it will never be zero because the moment it becomes zero, then we are concluding that our H is zero. And for that matter, um, the gradient having the function over zero will give us undefined. We'll look at that later. And so there must be a limit for which H can be as close, as close, as close, as close to becoming zero. There must be a limit to that. Right. So as A approaches P, as A is getting closer to P, our H will be approaching zero. Okay. And our second line also will be approaching or becoming a tangent. But we are not saying it should be equal to because when it becomes equal to, then it will be a different story as we are said. So when it becomes equal to, then here is going to be zero. For that matter, the whole thing becomes undefined. And so there must be a limit to which H can go. So we say the limit at which H is approaching zero, then this will be over that. And for that matter, we can approximate the whole of this to become the gradient of the curve at the point P. All right. And so we say that the gradient, which is M, is equal to change in y over change in x is approximately equal to the derivative. The moment we find the differential of the function, then we are finding the gradient or we call it the derivative of the function with respect to x. And so change in y over change in x will be approximately dy dx so that dy dx becomes the gradient of the curve at the point P. And this is what we refer to as the first principle. Thanks so much for watching.